Hey, Ken, are you still at the office? I just got back home. Oh, sorry. I have overtime today. What? I wish you'd have told me sooner. Isn't it supposed to be your turn to cook supper today? What am I supposed to do? Tell my boss to stick it where the sun don't shine? This is my job we're talking about here. Sure, I get that. But if I think you're coming home to cook for us, I'm not gonna make anything, am I, smartass? You better not complain when you get home and there's nothing on the table. Jeez, El, calm down. Fine, you're right. I should have told you earlier. Sorry. Sorry about supper, too. I'm gonna grab something on the way home from work. So you should just make something for yourself. Sure, I don't mind that. But how many times is this now? I told you before to let me know in advance when you can't make it home on time, didn't I? I feel like we have the same conversation several times a week. We have to operate as a team since we're both working full time, you know? What hope is there if we can't even communicate properly? Give me a break, Elle. I said I'm sorry. Want me to say it again? You said that last time, too. I don't like pushing the issue like this, but... Surely you can see this is happening too often. I don't feel like you're taking our relationship seriously. I am, babe, I swear. I'll let you know next time. I promise, okay? You promised last time. And the time before that. What do you want me to say then? All I can do is apologize. I don't want you to say anything. I want you to honor your word and stop doing it. In other words, I want you to start taking me seriously. I'm juggling virtually all of the cleaning, cooking, and laundry by myself, despite the fact we both work the same amount of hours in a week. Do you even know how much housework you're loading off on me? I know, babe. I've been careless. I know it probably just sounds like an excuse. But I do take you seriously. I'll do all the housework on my next day off, okay? How does that sound? Just forgive me. Pretty please? Actions speak louder than words, Ken. You think I enjoy getting mad over this crap? Trust me, this is the last discussion I want to be having with you. I know, I'm sorry. I've been taking advantage of you and that's not acceptable. I'm sorry for letting you do everything. I realize now that me not pulling my weight increases the burden on you. That's not fair. I won't do it again. I'm really sorry, babe. No, it's okay. I'm sorry too. Maybe I'm being too hard on you. If I'm in a position to do the housework, then I should just do it without complaining. It's just that I feel like I've been doing so much lately. I've been stressed out, and I think it's all just gotten to be too much for me. I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. It's fine. I'm the one in the wrong here, babe. You're right to be upset. No, you can't do the housework if you're at work, and I know how much your boss pressures you to do overtime. It's hardly like you're out drinking with your friends. I shouldn't have lost my rag like that. I'll make an effort to be more considerate from now on, honey. I I'm sorry. It's fine, really. You said it yourself. We work the same hours in a week. I might be at work now, but I'm still in the wrong for not helping out more while I'm there. If he asks me to do overtime again next week, I'll turn it down. Make sure I get home on time and do my share of the housework. Okay, great. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, about next week, I'll be going away on business on Wednesday. Wait, what? Really? To think I was just getting all hyped up to do the housework. What's that supposed to mean? You can do it whether I'm there or not. Yeah, you're right. I'll make the whole place sparkle. You'll barely recognize it when you get back. It'll be so clean, it'll blow your mind. How about I rustle you up your favorite dish as a welcome back present while your trip ends? I'd love that, sweetie. I, I can't wait. We haven't had much time to go out together like we used to lately. It's almost like we're leading separate lives now. 
The most I get to see you these days is when you eat your supper after work before falling asleep on the sofa. So it makes me really happy that you do that for me. Sorry about that, babe. It's not intentional. It's just I'm so busy with work these days, I barely have any energy left when I get home. It's looking like things might ease up next week, though. Glad to hear it. In that case, let's go on a date on your day off. It's been so long. It wouldn't hurt to go out together every now and then, you know? Just because we're married doesn't mean we shouldn't try and keep things fresh and exciting. If anything, it means we should all the more. Hmm, you're right. That could be fun, actually. Shall we go to a trendy cafe somewhere? Or how about Country Drive? Woohoo! Thanks so much, Ken. It means so much that you've made time for us, even though you're busy. You know I'm not the only one who's busy. Don't think I don't appreciate you, babe. I know how hard you work and I'm grateful for it. I feel like the luckiest man in the world to have a wife as kind and thoughtful as you. Hey, Ken, are you done at the office yet? Yep, I'm already at home. Wow, you weren't kidding when you said you'd get off early this week. Right? I have to do the final checks on the housework before you get home for your business trip tomorrow, after all. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I still gotta sleep the veranda. Aw, Ken, you don't have to go that far. You can just vacuum everywhere and be done with it for me. You don't have to treat the place like an imperial palace. It's fine, I want to. You'll be back after lunchtime tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'm flying back directly from Seattle. Alright, it's settled then. I'll rustle you up some succulent, juicy, tender fried chicken when you get back. Huh? Fried chicken? You're gonna make fried chicken? Yep. I was thinking of making some for dinner tonight anyway. So I figure I may as well make it for lunch so you can enjoy it when you get back from your trip. I had no idea you could make fried chicken. That's amazing. And all on your own, too? You don't have to go to all that trouble for me, though, honey. I'll be happy with something simple. To tell you the truth, I've been thinking about improving my cooking skills lately. I only ever make simple stuff. I want to challenge myself for once. I thought fried chicken would be a good way to do that. Even better if I can make you something delicious in the process. Two birds, one stone. Will you be okay? Be careful with the oil, it spits. I found the recipe online. It has step-by-step -step construction so simple, a monkey could follow them. Okay, great. I, I can't wait to get home. I can't believe you're making me fried chicken. This is gonna be the treat of a lifetime. Sorry if I fail miserably. <laughs> Don't worry about that, sweetie. I'm just happy you're making something for me. I'm sure you won't fail. You can do anything you put your mind to. I seriously can't wait. I, I almost want to book an earlier flight home. Whoa, calm down. You will finish your business trip. We all need you getting fire over my cooking. <laughs> Are you really that happy about it? It's just some fried chicken. I'm not really sure it deserves this much of a fuss. Yes, I really am. To be honest, I've been really worried about us lately. Worried? Why? Did I do something? Well, no, but I was worried we were drifting apart. It kind of felt more like we were housemates than husband and wife. We've been married three years now. Maybe, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. Really? You thought that? God, I guess it's not that hard to believe. It's my fault. I'm sorry, El. Listen, I've been doing some thinking myself these past few days. It's dawned on me I've been relying on you too much. I've been taking you for granted. I haven't been treating you like an equal partner in the relationship. 
I'm so pleased to hear you were thinking about me. Of course I was. You're my wife. I'm never as happy as I am with you. Me too, sweetie. I'm so happy to hear you say that. Shall we do a video call later? I thought it might be nice if we could eat our supper together while I'm away on business. I might only be eating a convenience store ready meal in my hotel room, but I think it'd be kind of romantic. Oh, um, that might be a little difficult. I can't promise anything. I'm not even close to getting started on supper yet. But don't you have work tomorrow? It's not like you to leave supper this late. I hope this isn't because you're going out of your way to do inhumane amounts of housework. I told you, I'll be happy as long as the floors are vacuumed. I just don't think I could promise an exact time. This is my first time making fried chicken, you know. It's probably going to take me ages. I want to make sure I get this right. I'm done with all my work stuff. All I have to do tomorrow is get on the plane home. I don't mind if it gets late. Um, I don't know, babe. I was looking forward to surprising you with the fried chicken tomorrow. I don't want to spoil it. I think it's best we wait. Let's leave the video call for another time. I'm rushing to get it done as it is, and the last thing I want to is mess it up. Jesus, Ken, exactly what kind of fried chicken is this? Isn't finding out all part of the fun? Let's not spoil the surprise. <laughs> Fine, you do have a point. Okay, I'll wait. Okay, well, I'm gonna take a shower, have my ready meal, and hit the hay. Alright. I hope you have a safe flight home tomorrow. Speak to you tomorrow. <laughs> Mom, what's with all the missed calls? Is something wrong? Why would you call me at this time of night? Did something happen? Did you press the button by mistake? Ellie, are you okay? Are you hurt? Huh? What do you mean? Why would I be hurt? How can you not know? I heard there was a fire at your apartment. A woman was seen being carried out with third degree burns. A fire at our apartment? What the hell? I'm away on a business trip right now. Away on business? Then who was that on the stretcher? Wait a sec. None of this makes sense. Can we start from the beginning here? What do you mean my apartment caught fire? What on earth? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm wondering too. Mom, are you half asleep by any chance? Did you take your sleeping pills? I know they can have some pretty heavy side effects. I am not on drugs, young lady! There was a fire at your apartment block. I saw it on the evening news. It said the fire came from a room on the third floor. I couldn't believe my eyes when the cameras panned to it. It was yours and Ken's apartment. There was a woman being carried out on a stretcher. I was sure it was you. What the... I, I, I don't even... Are you being serious? Do you think I'd lie about something like this? Besides, you know I'm a night owl. I'm always up at this time. Right, that's true. Sorry, Mom. I'm, I'm just struggling to process all this. Ah, I know. Uh, hold on a moment. There should be some articles about it online by now. Uh, let me look it up. It's fine, I just found one. What the hell's going on? Our apartment really was on fire! See? I knew it was your place, I just knew it! Oh my god. Ken said he was gonna try making fried chicken for the first time today. No way! Do you think that's how the fire started? Have you heard from him? He's not picking up! He hasn't read any of my messages either, oh my god! Don't panic, darling. I didn't hear anything about a man being hurt. The woman who got injured must have been from next door or something. It's only natural you're worried. But I haven't seen anything that would suggest Ken's in trouble. No, there has to be some kind of mistake. 
It says in the article, a woman was seen being carried out of mine and Ken's apartment. Besides, it says the firefighters were only seen tackling the blaze outside our place. This can only mean that woman was in our apartment. You don't know that, dear. It's too early for us to say anything yet. You can't believe everything you hear on the news. Reporters make mistakes all the time. Is it a good thing I wasn't there? Or... Oh my god, what if the worst happened? Maybe if I was there, I could have done something. Ugh, none of this makes any sense, and I don't know what to think. I'm just relieved that you're okay, Ellie. Of course, but I have to get home immediately. I have to find out what's going on. I can't just stay here and do nothing when I don't know if Ken's okay. You're right, of course you can't. Shall I try calling him too? It's fine, you, you don't have to do that. I'll call you as soon as I know anything. Ellie, I want you to know that I'm here for you, no matter what. Judging from the news coverage, no one's going to be living in that apartment again for a while. The whole place is burnt to a crisp. I want you to come and stay with me. Okay, I, I will. Mom, did Ken betray me? It's too early to say, dear. We just don't know. Are you sure you can make it home on your own? Uh, are you okay? Uh, should me and your dad come and pick you up? We don't mind. Don't be silly. I can't have you drive out all this way. Besides, I have a flight booked. Maybe I can switch out my ticket for an earlier one? I know some airlines let you do that for a fee. If I can, I should be back within three hours. Got it. We'll be waiting at the airport. Message me when you land, okay? You'll get back a damn sight quicker in mine and in your dad's car than you would trying to find a taxi in the early hours. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, Mom. I really appreciate this. I'll be in touch. And Mom, I'm sorry. What do you have to apologize for? We're your parents, dear. We're here for you no matter what, and we always will be. L, I owe you an apology. I can finally speak to you now things have calmed down. Calmed down? What does that mean? Did your lover get discharged from the hospital? No, she's still there. I see. So what do you want? Did you want to say something to me? I want to apologize for everything I've done. I was hoping we could talk about our future too, if that's alright with you. Our future? Don't make me laugh. Me and you don't have a future. In fact, I hope I never see you again. I'm so sorry. Turns out you weren't busy with work after all. You were busy cheating on me with your lover the whole time. That's the real reason you were leaving all the housework to me, isn't it? Oh man, I really screwed up, didn't I? I can't tell you how sorry I am, babe. I'm filled with nothing but regret, shame, and disappointment in myself. You deserve better. But I want you to know I don't feel anything for her. I was planning on ending it, actually. Really? You invited a woman you didn't feel anything for, and were getting ready to break up with into our apartment while I was away on a business trip? Well, uh... I... The plan was to get her to help me out with the housework. That's the most pathetic excuse I've heard in my whole life. Besides, if that's true, how do you explain the fact that the fire started because you guys got so caught up smooching each other's faces off that you knocked the chicken pot off the stove. That's what I heard. It's true, isn't it? My disgust for you is so intense, I find it difficult to verbalize, you prick. L, I'm sorry. I've been the fool. I really screwed up this time. But I mean it when I say I was planning on breaking up with her. That was going to be the last time we ever met. 
So what? You cheat on me for months behind my back, constantly lying about work being busy and being made to do overtime. You invite your lover over to our apartment while I'm away on business? Then, as if that wasn't bad enough, you're such an irredeemable moron that you managed to burn our freaking apartment down by making out with her too aggressively. Whether you were about to break up with her or not doesn't change any of that. I know that. There's no taking back what I did. I heard she got scalded by boiling hot cooking oil when you knocked the pot off the stove. I hate to say it serves her right, but it damn well frickin' does. Hey, don't speak about her that way. The doctors told her she needs skin grass and she's going to be permanently disfigured. Oh no, that poor baby. You can't seriously be suggesting I should be sympathetic. Towards a woman who got involved with a man she knew damn well was married? It wasn't like that. Don't blame her. The only one at fault here is me. I know that. That's why we're getting a divorce. No, I don't wanna! Why would you jump straight to the forest? Let's not be hasty here. Surely we can talk about this like mature adults? Excuse me, mature adults? You've got some nerve to say that after what you did. I love you, Elle. I don't want to be with anyone but you. Why'd you cheat on me, then? You can say whatever you like, but you did what you did, and nothing will change that. Actions speak louder than words can, and you've already made it abundantly clear how much I actually mean to you. Please, babe. We just got caught up in the heat of the moment. She wasn't serious about me, either. It was something but a cheap fling to both of us. The problem is, that's not true, is it? Because she was serious about you, wasn't she? I know her parents have been telling you to take responsibility and leave me for her for a while now. I had no intention of doing that. We're both adults. If she didn't like it, she was free to walk away at any time. Her parents have no power over me. Sure, I bear most of the responsibility for what happened with the house. I won't deny that. But she was the one who knocked the pot off the stove. I couldn't give any less of a damn. We're getting a divorce and that's that. She can have you all to herself now. No, that's not what I want. I want you and no one else. You're my soulmate, babe. A life without you isn't worth living. I can't bear the thought of losing you. I need you in my life. You're the peanut to my butter, the ice to my cream, the bacon to my eggs. You're... you're the love of my life. Please don't leave me. If you really felt that way, you wouldn't have cheated on me. That doesn't mean I love you, babe. It's just in a man's nature. She was nothing to me, I swear. It still happened as a result of your actions. You're the one who decided to cheat on me. No one made you. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I swear. And I'll never believe another word that comes out of your mouth for as long as I live. It was all lies. Nothing but lies. When you said you were going to start making more of an effort around the house... When you said you had to stay late at the office, it was all lies. You were meeting up with your lover for seedy romps behind my back the whole time. Lies. Which part of that means I'm the love of your life or soulmate? Which part of that means you love me? Which part of that means you want me and no one else? Elle, please. I'm begging you to find it in your heart to forgive me. I admit it. I've been a lying scumbag, a treacherous lowlife, a scoundrel, a dog. But I'll never betray you again, and I mean that. How could you betray me any more than you already have? I'll never let you do this to me again. I want a divorce. Please, 
I have severe burns on my legs. So what? Surely Lovergirl's worse off. She has burns covering her entire body. Are you trying to make me feel sorry for you? You should really choose your words more carefully if you don't want to piss me off even more. Please, I'm going to get pressure into marry her if you divorce me. I'm not interested. It's you I want. It's not just her parents giving me crap now either. My mom and dad found out about the fire and the affair. They're telling me to man up and take responsibility for what I did by marrying her. Yep, they know too. They probably already knew about the fire from the news coverage, but I made sure to tell them we're getting a divorce. And I explained exactly why and made sure they knew whose fault that is. I couldn't agree more, by the way, that you should man up and take responsibility. If it's conversation you want, okay. Please, just don't divorce me. Anything but divorce. She was nothing but a cheap fling. She needs nothing to me, I swear. I'm begging you here. I'll do anything you say from now on. Anything. I'll do all the housework. I'll give you control of my bank account and you decide how we spend my salary. I didn't marry you for any of those things. I just wanted us to be happy together. It looks like that was naive of me. Please forgive me, Elle. The day we got married was the best day of my life. I felt so lucky to have a wife as brilliant and amazing as you. I can't lose you after all this time. Besides, we had a date plan. I was really looking forward to it. If you really think this is the time for us to be going on dates, then I can only conclude inhaling all that smoke must have given you brain damage. You're the most important person in the whole world to me. I'm sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. Your apologies are empty and meaningless because you're a shameless, compulsive liar. I'd have to be crazy to believe you. All I feel is regret. I wish we never got married. No, I wish we never even met. I divorced my low-life husband immediately after that. He was adamant he wouldn't go along with it, but all four of our parents called us together for a f family meeting and basically ordered him to sign the papers under threat of disownment. It was so reassuring to have everyone's support. I thought the fact they weren't willing to overlook Ken's disgusting behavior just because he's their son was really admirable. In the end, he reluctantly signed the papers with a look of defeat on his face. Apparently, he's still engaged in a bitter struggle with his lover and her family. They're demanding he take responsibility for what he did and put a ring on her finger. I heard she has horrific burns all over her body as a result of knocking over the pan filled with boiling oil. As a result, she's covered in bandages even now and needs support for basic everyday stuff like getting dressed and washing herself. As a woman, I understand how horrible that must be for her. But I'd be lying if I said I felt even an ounce of sympathy. Obviously, that goes for my scumbag ex-husband, too. If not for their lust or their lies, none of this would have ever happened. There would have been no fire, and neither of them would have been injured. What can I say? Actions have consequences. I'm starting to believe karma might actually be a real thing. They weren't the only ones affected by all this. They also caused a lot of trouble for our neighbors. And not to mention the firefighters who had to rush out and risk their lives to clean up their mess. I'm not holding my breath, but I hope they reflect on their actions and use this as an opportunity to become better. At the very least, people who don't cause problems for others. And that's not to say I want them to live easy lives. Far from it. Maybe it's petty of me, but to be completely honest, I hope the problems between Ken and his lover continue long into the future. They both deserve to suffer as much as possible. I went to live with my parents after the fire, and when I wasn't at work, I spent most of my time in a daze doing sweet F.A. I didn't help out around the house even once and left everything to my mom and dad. I'm not normally like that at all. 
I can only put it down to being in a state of shock and needing time to process everything that had happened to me. But thanks to the love and kindness of my parents, the sympathy and understanding co-workers who were kind enough to support me with my work when it was clear I wasn't my usual self, and all the friends who visit me regularly to check up on how I'm doing. I feel myself gradually returning to normal. I know it's still early days, but I think I'm finally starting to feel hopeful about the future again. I'm under no illusions. I know it's going to take a long time to get over the shock of being betrayed by the person I loved like that. But I can't go through life being miserable and depressed all the time.